everyone, uh, it's Nat here, and I just wanted to do an update on kind of where I'm at in uh, my mite situation right now. And I kind of wanted to show you a little picture about, um, or a little video rather, about mites and kind of what I find in general sample wise. It's a little hard to see. Um, let me try to go towards the camera. You can kind of see in here, uh, these are some of the samples I've caught. Uh, you can see they vary in size. There's uh, the biggest ones are the orange ones. Um, the smaller ones are the black ones. Uh, they're a little more uh, tube-like. Sometimes they're a little round. They're a little bit smaller. I can't imagine that the biggest ones are any larger than one millimeter in size. I want to say, and the smaller ones are, oh, maybe about half that. Um, but you can see they're transparent. Um, some of them have a little um, black thing. It's really hard to see. I'm sorry. My camera is not the best. Um, and I've just got quite a few of them. I'm just not sure where to send them. Uh, the orange ones are pretty dried up. Uh, those come out of my laptop. Um, if you're wondering if I still have them, yes, in a way I do because I still have items that are infested. So, if you do decide to keep items that are infested, keep that in mind that I'm still finding um, mites in my stuff. My laptop has a lot of grooves and, and gaps and, and they can survive in it. Um, I typically find these orange ones. Um, they crawl onto my foot from my laptop. Um, they crawl out of the, you know, the crevice there. Those are probably the ones from the original house. It's been since May 2015. That gives you an idea that even though these orange ones were pretty weak, they were still able to crawl out of my laptop onto my foot. So they were clearly still alive. So that gives you an idea that these mites do live for a long period of time. Um, I'm not really sure how they live for a long period of time. I assume they go into some sort of diapause, but I'm not, you know, an expert on diapause or any of that sort of thing. I can only surmise. Uh, you can see there's just like a variety of the stages, the life stages of my mite here. Um, this is very tiny. If I zoom out here, you can see in relation to my hand how small they actually are. Um, and a lot of them that I would find on my body are about three times smaller than that. So unless you have really good eyes, you'd never see it. Um, a lot of these mites are transparent, so if I take them under the scope, they'll have legs. Uh, they do not have segments in their body, so if you're seeing an uh, insect, that's an insect, um, like an ant or something that usually has segments in its body, you know, like a, a head, thorax, um, and so on. A mite is basically one structure, one, you know, round structure or whatever uh, shape it is. Um, you won't typically notice any eyes on them. Um, sometimes you'll notice a biting mouth part. I have noticed that on mine a few times. Uh, if I were to take them over under the scope, I've had several pictures of them. I could take a few under the scope right now. They're not going to look all that great on my camera, so you probably just want to refer to the pictures I have. Um, the bad news is, and the mysterious news is that I don't have an identification on which type of bird or rat mite it may be. I know it's one of those because it's fairly visible. And it does a tremendous amount of damage to your skin. Uh, but we all know that. So, this kind of gives you an idea of what you might see. Now, don't just assume, just because I'm catching a bunch of these, that you are. I never caught any until a year later. So, that's very unusual. I mean, it just sort of happened, and, you know, my stuff had them, and I happen to have a species of mite that gets really big. Not all these species get, you know, this big. Um, one millimeter of, or above is pretty big for a mite. Uh, they are a mite. I have been told by an ophthalmologist they are a mite. It's just we don't know what kind. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've found them. I typically find them on my body. Uh, they cause all kinds of biting issues. At the time of this video, um, due to working on my laptop, you can kind of see, you know, they do tremendous damage. Um, they do the damage of, of what a spider does uh, because they're basically 
uh, spiders. And uh, I definitely know that the source is my laptop, though, and I'll be fine once I get rid of it. But uh, it's interesting. They can live in possessions. <laughs> it's, a, it's almost a little unbelievable. I know a lot of you... Um, I said it's like a nightmare. It is. It's uh, it's definitely an interesting discovery. It's it's not fun. I'm so sorry going through this. I you know like I said I've been going through this for May since May 2015. So, but yeah, that just gives you an idea of the larger species. Um, if you're not seeing them, don't fret. It's so hard to catch them. I didn't catch them like I said till a year later. So and that's when I moved. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see these here are transparent. Um, I'm trying to think what I could explain to you that would be a way to catch them. They are transparent before feeding, so don't expect to see them before feeding. Um, no one can see them against the backdrop of a house. I don't see how that'd be possible. That's probably why you're not seeing them. Uh, if you do catch them, eh, you're probably going to see them, and that's after they've probably fed on you. So they'll be dark colored. Um, Depending on your species, usually a dark spec, uh, they generally won't even be this big. I mean, they could still do a lot of damage, even smaller than this. I've caught one smaller than this, about three sizes down, and uh, they were in the process of biting me, and the, the area was itchy and red, and I plucked it off, and uh, it seemed to stick to my skin. So, um, just a reminder, if you're looking for a mite sample, make sure it's got, you know, some legs on it. Um, is transparent and you know actually resembles um, you know a mite it'll have about eight legs uh, it's pretty typical for the parasitic mite species so that's what you kinda wanna look out for doesn't really have a set of eyes that I can see if, if they do they have a set of eyes we can't really even see uh, the type of microscope that I have is just a standard microscope I found off of Amazon. You've probably seen this microscope before. It's uh, it's it runs close to a hundred dollars. I think it was on sale for eighty something when I got it. It'll have a you know a backlight you can turn on and off, and uh, you can mess with the uh, the settings for pulling it up. It's not a, the best scope in the universe, but it does allow me to you know get a good picture under the scope. Um. I can try to put one under the scope and uh, see what it looks like, so give me a second here. And it's kind of funny, I never thought I would be doing a home scientist kind of thing. Uh, let me grab one of these specs here and see if it's something. Even I uh, mess up from time to time and uh, I don't actually catch a mite, so don't be discouraged if you do or do not catch a mite because it is very hard hold on so you can kinda see I don't really have the most professional setup here I just kinda gotta deal with what I have uh, usually you do like a slide mount we obviously can't do that weird you know we don't have a scientific station here hold on a second And I'm just trying to get back on there. Hold on. Okay. So I just kind of get it on the slide. Uh, they usually have the, the glass slides for sale on Amazon alongside of that. And I just sort of, uh, I don't know if you can see this here. I just sort of focus it until, uh, give me a second to focus it on there. Until I can see it. Uh... It's very hard to see it. Some of my mites are just so destroyed. I can't even see if they're, you know, mites, but... And you'll just sort of look, you know, for... I'm sorry, it's not going to be the best picture here. Uh, but what you should be seeing is definitely, you know, something with legs. I can try to find another one that looks better. Some of my samples get squished a lot. Uh, let's see. Some of my bigger ones are the orange ones. They are very gross. 
So I'm going to put this orange one under the scope here and see if I can find something. Okay. Hold on while I focus it. So, what you see is not always, you know, what, what I'm going to see because you may have a different species. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe not. I apologize, it's not the best. Hold on. No. Yeah, there it goes. You might be able to get a glimpse of that if you pause the video at one point. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a little orange mite of some sort. Don't know what it is. Uh, probably rat mite. Our source was rats in our neighborhood. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much, you know, me, but that's not everybody, um, not everybody's gonna find a sample. It's, you know, very rare that you can find a sample, but it doesn't mean that you aren't suffering from, um, a mite infestation, or that you're crazy, and I hope that you never, you know, accept a doctor telling you you're crazy. Um, there just isn't a whole lot of information on it, and it's unacceptable, and I understand that. I understand your suffering, I understand where you're coming from, all of you. Which is why I am working as hard as I can. Um, I'm just one person, so, you know, trying to do videos, trying to help out, and just generally, you know, trying to show as much information as I can. Um, I am sending some stuff to, uh... Dr. Olivier Sparagano, I hope I said his name right, and, you know, trying to work with him and just kind of generally, uh, you know, get some more information on mites, show them how severe the problem is. Uh, a little update on the website is that we're doing pretty well on it. Um, it's just going really slow because it's just me and, and my boyfriend, and we're just, you know, volunteering to do this, and, and we don't have any coders or anybody. I literally had to design it. Uh, by myself and then he has to code it because I don't have the time to learn the coding that I used to know. I just don't. In between <laughs> all the mite stuff and uh, um, things like that, but uh, we're doing better. It, like I said, if I get, uh, you know, on my laptop, I can see them come out and they'll try to bite me. Sometimes I don't see them. And uh, we got a lot of our stuff in bins and pest strips and stuff like that. Not sure how effective the pest strips are. Uh, <clears throat> I got the little dog here off of her uh, floor so she doesn't get eaten by the mites that are typically on the floor. And that's helped a lot. There's not really too many. Uh, they're primarily in my stuff at this point. So I remember uh, almost a year ago here uh, I would be getting attacked and it would be constant, it would be day and night. And I still have a scarring from it, and it was horrific. And, um, like most people in the group, I did, uh, you know, feel like <laughs> life was not worth living anymore, and I understand where that's coming from. If you're feeling like that, you know, uh, reach out and we'll try to talk to you. I understand it's really hard, I try to talk to people all the time. Um, but I don't always have the time, so I apologize. So, yeah, I hope this video helps, and I know it's a little long, but there isn't a whole lot of um, information out here on this sort of thing for people, and it's, it, to me, it's criminal. I feel like the CDC, to a degree, knows and just doesn't have anything to say about it. I think that, you know, that's, in my eyes, that's kind of clear. Um, so, I just hope that, you know, this, the... Uh, research that's going on in Europe, the conferences that are going on in Europe, our, our non-profit will really, um, you know, bring to light some of this and, you know, because in science there's, it's just one of those things, um, there's always scientific denial. I think Jane Ishkes talked about this before, but autism used to be, you know, denied and it used to be the mother's fault and blah 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 and, and science and actual scientists actually thought that well we know that that's that's just bs and then a patient group you know came about it you know to um take care of that sort of thing and then you know prove that was wrong and sometimes for conditions like these that has to happen we know that 
we have an issue, but we have to um, basically <laughs> do it ourselves, you know, to get things, to get the ball rolling. And then, you know, things follow, like research and stuff like that. And I, I think they are taking it seriously. I think Dr. Olivier Spiragano is taking it ser uh, seriously. I think uh, David George is probably taking it seriously. Those are, you know, uh, the researchers that write a lot about uh, D. Galanay. I think I said that right, the red poultry mite. Um, and yeah, um, you can see we have some dishes here that aren't done. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Uh, just no time to do dishes. I mean, you know, your lifestyle changes so drastically. Uh, you can see that everything looks you know, organize and put away and um, I'll walk in here for a second. Clothes and bags, clothes and bins, my stuffs and bins, anything I ever had from the original house. Um, regarding your stuff, I wouldn't take it with you if you move. I just wouldn't. As I watch my laptop have mites coming out of it, I really just wouldn't take anything with you and it's just too much of a environmental kind of problem I'd almost describe it as a biohazard um, so yeah I would really just as I walk in circles just not uh, take your stuff with you I don't think it's worth it um, it's just stuff and I know we have to have stuff but we'll get more stuff eventually is the way I look at it uh, as for your clothes replace your clothes you can see that I'm so tired of this I'm getting lazy and I didn't see all my clothes um, <clears throat> yeah just you know it's it's a serious problem and if you're suffering really